Hello and welcome to this video by FilmsByChris.com. I am Chris and today we're going to be looking at pulling some information from a website. So the other day I get a text from a friend with this video in it and he says this is the project I'm working on and it's a script he wrote to as you can see scroll through this page of realtors and uh, get some of their information looks at like 50 or 100 at a time and uh, I said that's great can I see your code so he sent me a link to his code which is right here it's uh, 64 lines of Python there's a few empty lines there so we'll say 60 lines of Python code uh, and I said uh, you know, he said he wished that he could do it in Bash, but it's a dynamic page. And if you watched my last video, we talked about that a little bit. So you see where we're going with this. This will be a real life scenario. Um, and I said, I said, let me check it out. I was kind of busy that night. We got together the next day. He walks in the door. I said, I can do it in one line of Bash code. It's a long line, but not really that long. Um, but let's go ahead and look at it. I asked him for the URL, which was uh, this right here. And uh, it's very, it's case sensitive. So you have to have FL and then Naples is the city. And um, yeah, so how do we grab this information? So if I take this, as we looked at in the last video, and I just say curl that page, it will give me out the HTML of the page. So for example, uh, this guy's name is David Adams. So let's just grep dash I for case insensitive, Adam. I always do that, Adam, not Adam. Didn't come up because we didn't get that information because it's dynamically loading which at first might seem like a bad thing but really it's a good thing so because it gets us instead of having to scrape the page we can just get JSON information so I'm going to open up my developers console here I hit control shift I or F12 it may be different in your browser but let's go ahead and load that up I go to network and if I click all and I reload the page here it's gonna show me everything that loads on the page which is a lot there are little icons for their their there are pictures and stuff like that, but we can narrow it down. I can say, oh, uh, just only show me images. But if I do XHR, you can see, oh, we have two things here. We click on this first one, look at the preview. It says search support filters query. So we can, you know, look through the tabs on this and there's some JSON in there. But if we look at the next one, search agents query, click on this, oops, go down a couple of levels and we can start to see in here that we have agent profile information. Awesome. We can see names, we can say see initials, we can see everything that we need. So all I have to do, well I can look at this, I can look at the header here and I can scroll down and see what information we're posting, information like this, and I can figure out and create my own command. But real quick, I just can right click that, say copy, uh, and I can say copy as curl. I'm going to come back here. I'm going to paste in. Again, let me bring that down just a little bit. There's a lot of information in there that we may or may not need, but that is everything that we need. Also, something I forgot to mention in the last video is that it is passing this uh, user agent information. So even though I'm using curl, the server shouldn't realize that. They should think that I'm still using whatever browser it is, you know, a Chrome browser. In this case, it's my Brave browser. It's going to think it's that browser. So it doesn't even realize you're using curl. Shouldn't. Anyway, I hit enter and right here we get some JSON information. I can easily pipe that. Again, this is a long command. Let me clear the screen here. So all that and then here at the end, I'm going to pipe that into JQ. If you don't have that installed, just sudo apt install JQ. Uh, JQ space dot. Uh, actually, if you don't do the dot, you'll get formatted J, uh, JSON, but then you can't pipe it. To pipe it, you have to have the dot there. We do that, and look, I have some nicely um, pasted, you know, nicely formatted JSON information. And if I was to look through that, I know I can now grep, you know, before we do that, let's just get this so we don't constantly ping their website. Let's just dump the information once. But before we dump it, let's quickly look through here at the stuff we're passing. Again, there's a lot of information here, but you can see uh, data binary. You can see it's passing JSON information as a query to the website. And right through here, we can see city. We have Naples, so we can change the city programmatically if we wanted. We have the state, which is Florida. And look right here, it says first 50. Let's go to that. So do, 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 do. again, it's a long command, but you didn't have to type it out. You just copied and pasted it. And here, I'm going to change this to 5,000. 
and I'm going to hit that, and it seems to still work. Let's run the first command. I'm going to dump that into a file. I'll dump that into, I'll just call it data1.json. And then I'll run it again with the 5,000 instead of 50. And I'll put that into data2.json. OK, so if I list out, you see it took a little bit longer that time. To list out, we can see that we have two files now. I can cat out data1.json. And I can put that into jq dot and we can look at this real quick and see that there are phone numbers called number there's the city's city if I scroll up here I can see um, that their address there uh, we have for their name we have given initials and full so the name is broken down so theoretically I can come in here I can pipe this format with JQ if you don't have JQ you can always use things like um, said and awk uh, but I'm going to go ahead and just use JQ because it formats it nicely. And I'm going to grep for full. And we get a list of names. And I can now pipe that and say WC-L. We can see we have 50 names. That was our first request. Let's change this and look at data two. 120. Now, we asked for 5,000, but there's only 120, apparently, um, uh, agents. That's what I'm looking for. 20, 120 agents in Naples. Um, so, But we'll look at that more in a moment. Uh, so we got that. Uh, now, I can, I, like I said, I've got a list of their names. But if I do grep-e, full-e, number, and dash e, I think, email, I now have a list of names, numbers, and emails. And we can now format this a little bit better. Uh, and there's lots of different ways you can do this. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use tr, and I'm going to say dash d for delete, and I'm going to say delete all new line characters. And that puts everything on one line. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm now going to add in a new line character before the full. I'm going to use sed now. And of course, we could do this all in one sed command. But I like using tr for deleting new line characters. It's a little bit cleaner, I think. But I'm going to say find all in quotations full. And I am going to replace that. Actually, let's do full colon space. Or sorry, and the quotation should be here. And I'm going to replace that with a new line character. Now I have each realtor on its own line with its num name, number, and email address. But let's go a little bit further. We're going to format this. There's a lot of spacing in there. There's different ways you can do this. I'm just going to say set again. Actually, I'm going to use the same set command here. And I'm getting into set a little bit here. If you're not familiar with set, you know, we can, um, I have lots of videos on it. But I'm going to explain what I'm doing here. I'm going to say space, space, and then remove that. So it's going to remove any double spaces. There we go. We're getting a nicely formatted line here. And what I'm going to do next is I'm now going to say, uh, use set again, and I'm going to say, look for and substitute anything that says number space colon with nothing. And I'm going to do the same, semicolon, look, search for and substitute anything that says email space, email colon space. Look at what we have here. We have nicely formatted CSV. Now there are some issues because not everyone has a phone number, uh, but I could actually dump this into a file. I'll just call it one.csv. And then I can say xdg-open, xdg-open uses whatever default program you have for a certain file format. I'm going to say open that. It's going to open it up in LibreOffice or actually GNumeric in this case, but whatever your default spreadsheet application is. And you can see we did a pretty good job in just a very fast thing. And I dumped it to a file and then you know ran that code on it. We could have done it all in one. But you can see we have 120, because there's a blank line at the top here. Um, and you can see there's one example here where they don't have a phone number. And what did I just do? <laughs> a phone number, so it moved over. And I actually did write more code for my friend that adjusted that. It looked at that second column. Uh, if it had an at symbol, then it added a blank space for a number, moving that over. And we also, I can remove all the dashes. Apparently, double clicking on one of these boxes uh, pastes it over the next few rows. I don't know what, I don't use G numeric uh, very often. Or numeric? I don't know. Um, but it's that simple. And we can change this again. We got 120 here. If I was, yeah, just discard that. Let's go back to our curl command here again, which we curled from the page. I had set 5,000, which I have found 
uh, is the max on this page, which we'll talk about in a moment. But let me go here and change this to somewhere where it says Naples for the here Naples. And again, it is case sensitive, this, this particular website, Miami. And I'm going to dump that into data three. If I cat that out, data three. Well, I did, oh, I accidentally put it back in data two. I overwrote data two. Anyway, and I put that into JQ dot, and I rep full for the name and do a word count on that. You can see that apparently in Miami they have 687 uh, realtors. Uh, and if I was to go back in here, okay, let me change this to three. And where we have, where it says city and the value is Miami. Again, don't get scared that this is a long command. It's just a lot of information in there. I'm going to erase where it says city and just say, give me a state of Florida. I'm going to dump that into data three. Notice how long it's taking? Because it's pulling more information. And I was using uh, set a lot. Really, JQ can be used to search through JSON information and pull out that information. I was just using said because I'm more familiar with it. Uh, but if I come in here and I change this to three, you can see that we have 5,003. There might be a few extra lines in there, um, bits of information. This particular website is cutting you off uh, from what I've looked at at 5,000 returns. So even though I'm asking for the state of Florida, it's giving it's cutting me off 5,000. But there's a way around that if we look at the page again. I'm going to click here to clear out what we've captured, and I'm going to scroll down a little bit. Oh, look at that. We got another query here under XHR. I'm going to look at that, and you can see the response here. And I'm going to copy that as curl and look at that command. And it is very, very similar to the last one. So we have the city of Naples right here. And um, sorry, city of Naples here. And you can see it says first 50, which can change that number. But look, it's added this after 49. OK, so if I wanted to do the state of Florida and grab more than 5,000, I can say grab the first you know, 5,000. And I can say after 400, uh, 4,999. And that should give me the next batch. And I'm pretty sure that for my buddy, I was able to pull down or, you know, around 10,000 agents and then went through and found the ones with emails. It was like 807 or sorry, 8,700 something. So I was able to get him a list of realtors information. Uh, we put in the cities there. We, we you know, so we, it, uh, grabbed the proper cities and stuff that he wanted. Uh, but it's a lot better than what he was doing. It's a lot less code. It was a lot quicker because we're only doing, and we're not hitting up their page a hundred times. I just said, hey, give me 5,000. Hey, give me 5,000 more. That's great. Where he was going, give me 50. Give me 50 more. Give me 50 more. And it was taking forever. He was getting some errors. And it was not just pulling down this information. It was also pulling down, it was loading the entire page. So it kept scrolling and loading up all those images. And if we list out here, you don't want to bog down somebody's website. But look, when I grabbed those 5,000 uh, bits of information, it was only three megabytes. I do that two or three times. I've only pulled down under 10 megabytes and I can get the whole state of Florida from them and I'm not bogging down their site because you don't want to bog down someone's site. Uh, if you do a lot of queries, if they're monitoring at all, they're going to notice. Um, and they might block you and you don't you don't want to do that to somebody's site uh, but it was very simple for me to pull down this information for them and and I didn't have to pull more than 10 megabytes worth of information to get him all the information he needed and that's pulling information from my dy dy dynamic page where if it was a static page I would have had to pull down the HTML every time, scrape through that, and I would have had to do a whole bunch of requests for them because you don't want to load that much information into one web page. So it would have to be page by page, loading new page each time. So again, in many cases, a dynamic page is simple, if not simpler, than scraping the page. You're pulling down properly formatted information and you're not bogging down their website like you would if you were actually scraping because this isn't even really scraping you're just requesting information from the page I'm just requesting uh, you know a uh, hundred times 
what they uh, originally requested, but I do it all in one f swoop, too, if I wanted to get them all. Anyway, again, this looks like a lot, but don't worry about it because all I had to do was say right click, copy as curl, and then I just changed the bit of information I wanted from 50 to 5,000 and pulled down the information. Then if I wanted more, I added that after, and I can always change the city or state if I wanted. And that is how you do that. I do thank you for watching. Please visit filmsbychris.com. That's Chris with a K. There's a link in the description to my page. If you enjoyed this video, think about subscribing, liking, sharing. And if you want to support, on my website, you can go to support section and you can make a donation through PayPal. Uh, but you can also um, support me on Patreon. And, and that, that's, that's fun and useful. So, uh, yeah, think about that. There should be links to that in the description as well. And I hope that you have a great day.